What's going on? Family, what's going on? Your welding coach, Joe Brown, AKA Black Phoenix is in the building. And today I wanted to do a live weld test on a 3H coupon. This is a very uh, familiar weld test to a lot of people. They do 3 8 to one inch coupons uh, on stick welding. So we're gonna be using some 330 second rods. And I just wanted to go through a couple things, uh, give, give some people a couple pointers and tips. I've been having a few people inbox me, and when I go live, everybody tends to want to have questions with the uphill and the overhead stick test. So we're gonna do uh, a few live videos throughout the week. Today I'm gonna do one on the uphill, and probably tomorrow or the next day I do one uh, overhead. But the goal is, is to do this coupon all the way out, family. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot, but it do take a little time. Uh, our goal is just to go through the proper steps to get you to pass this test and uh, keep you aware of, of, of what you're actually doing when you're taking this test. So I'm going to push this over here. I wish I had me some. Hold up, hold up for one quick second. I think it's over here. Okay. All right, I had to go find a little piece of soapstone. I wanted to show you something. So on these coupons, this one is actually seven inches and it got an inch lip pretty much. Uh, three quarter lip on the top, three quarter lip on the bottom. Sometimes you have maybe an inch runoff tab, but on this particular one with these plates we ordered, these, now these are some plate tests that we ordered. So we didn't actually make these in class. We just ordered them already pre-cut already ready and uh actually was a good deal so we just got it like this so this is seven this coupon so you want to you want to keep in mind before you take your test you want to know where they're going to be testing it now on this seven this coupon with the inspector that uh we go to when we take our plates he said he'd take an inch off the top cut it out throw it away then he'd take an inch and test then he go from the bottom he'll do an inch throw it away then he'll go another inch and then he'll bend test that so your first inch is going to be took out. So your first inch on this is going to be took out. So you want to maintain and make sure you got no tie-ins or no uh, slag inclusions or no uh, big spots or any type of pinholes or porosity, you don't want to get them in your test zone. So if you can see this a little bit, let me turn this camera over a little bit. Due to the lightning situation, I want to make sure y'all can see this pretty good. Okay, so you want to focus here and here, and you want to make sure in this two spots, you don't have no tie-ins, family. It's going to be easier for you to pass this test by you not having any tie-ins. So you want to focus your tie-ins around here in the center of this. And I will say this, we're going to run a stringer, a slight weave to tie into the sidewalls, and then we're going to take it back out. So you should use two rods getting started. And then once you do your hot pass, I like to do a hot pass for the sake of time. We do a hot pass, and then that hot pass allows you to burn out any uh, slag inclusions or anything, any errors you might have. And then run straight stringers. Now this is to help you pass the test a lot easier if you run stringers versus you trying to weave and actually missing a spot or didn't hesitate and now you got a piece of slag stuck in there. And if this was a D1.5 test, all you can use is your hand tools. And all I'm gonna use is my hand tools on this test like it's a D1.5, but this is a D1.1 test. But I'm going to act like it's a D1.5 because I want you to be good at using the welder, pulling out, knowing how to tie in. And uh, I like to tell people all the time, man, I'm a, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm a welder, not a grinder. You know what I'm saying? I like to tell people all the time. But grinding is a part of welding now. You're going to do a lot of grinding and welding. You're going to do both. But I like to make my welds uh, end up where I don't really need a grinder. So I try to preset the machine, get everything fine-tuned. 
so that way I can dive into this without a whole lot of errors. So we're gonna start this off. I got three 30 second rods, family. I got three 30 second rods and we're going to start this off by uh, running our root pads. So rule of thumb, if you're running with a um, 332nd rod, if you place that rod right up against that wall, right up against the inside of the the inside of the back of strip, you at least want to go up on that wall the thickness of the rod. I'm gonna say about an eighth inch to crawl up on the side, but you want to make sure you tying in real good. You hesitate. You're doing like a one-two, one-two, one-two before you get to diving into it, because that's really gonna cause you some issues if you don't. So make sure you tie into the side wall. Let me say, make sure I got answer this question before I go on. Oh, actually, I got my old one over here on the table. You wanna see my old one? I just burnt it up. And I actually just bought a new welding jacket. <laughs> Show you my old one real quick, since you got jokes. <laughs> I just upgraded, family, I just got a blessing. I done burnt this thing here up. I be using it all the time. I really still like it though, but I got a lot of holes on my sleeves and stuff, so. Somebody blessed me with a new coat, so hey. I'm gonna keep it moving with my new green coat. You know, you know what they say, when you get, when you get into school, you're green, so I'm gonna act like I'm one of them, I'm green too. You know what I mean? But we gonna dive into this, fam. So the first thing, I'm gonna start off on this root path. I'm running about 90 amps and my goal with this, I try to shoot for, I try to shoot for a straight 90 with a slight push, just a slight push. And you wanna hesitate, you wanna hesitate on your side walls as much as you can. Um, and you wanna be comfortable, family, get comfortable. Always get comfortable, make sure you can go up and down, make sure you're good. Now with this one, I don't really have, I'm gonna use this chair actually, just as my little brace. And we're gonna dive into this one. Like I said, I'm using three 30 second rods, so there's gonna be a few different passes to get this going. But for the sake of time, I'm not gonna run stringers all the way, all the way out. Um, I'm gonna actually run the root, the hot pass, and I'm gonna probably put a stringer on top of the hot pass to build the plate up and then save the last stringers for the sake of time uh, for the video. So let's dive into this, man. <laughs> Oh shoot, no ground. That ain't gonna help me. I was over here on the other side earlier. So I had the ground connected to the other table. All right, fine. Let's dive into this. Now me personally, I made it to my half spot. Now me personally, I like to burn the rods down to the numbers. I think that's good in the field to get a habit of doing that. Um, that way if a CWI walk through or expect to walk through, they'll make sure, you know, they'll know you're using the right type of rods. And then you don't have, you're not forcing yourself to try to complete this well. So what I do too, I only knock off the tip of the well, where I just welded it. Now this is what I do just for the sake of time when I'm testing. 
I don't clean the whole well until I'm done with the whole well. You know what I mean? So while I'm tying in, I just make sure where I'm tying in is clean, and then I'll take it all the way back out. Also, keep you a good light on you, fam. Having you a good light and a good little scraper right here to make sure the sides are clean is going to be a benefit for you. So let's dive into our second pass. Like I say, it's all about getting comfortable. Get comfortable, get comfortable, because this is a test. When I finish doing this pass, I'm going to check back in and see what type of comments I got. So let's dive in. This one right here, I almost made it to the top. So never force it. If you don't make it because you had to weave and make sure you were putting some well in there, do not force it, fam. That one I slew up a little bit. I'm gonna finish this rod. I got like a piece, a half inch to do this, and then I use this to finish. Form a habit of starting on your backing strip and finishing on your backing strip. It's gonna be important. <laughs> very, very important. We dive in. See a few people checked in. Hey, do both of them, fam. Do well named carpentry. Hey, learn it all if you can, fam. Yes, I do all of it, fam. Hey, that's cool. Holla at me, inbox me, man, and uh, give me some updates, and we'll see if I can get you down here, man, to come visit the school, most definitely. Hey, learn, family, learn, family. Hey, while I'm up here, I'm going to be going live, so maybe I can give you some information to help you want to dive into it and be more a part of it. Normally, on uphill, if I'm going to do a pattern, it's going to be an upside-down C or upside-down horseshoes or something like that. Half moon or whatever they want to call it. Hey, we're going to, okay, most definitely. We can do a well off. I will most definitely on my next, uh, on my next couple videos, I'll try to do some. Yeah, I can do it all, fam. 5G, 6G. I'm a 6G certified welder. 7018 is what I'm using right now, 332nd. The best way to put a couple trades on your belt, fam, is find you a school or get some older job training, fam. One to, one to two. Okay, make sure. Inbox me and let's talk about when I can get you up here to do some welding with them. This class right here just started, so they'll be a little bit better. I say in about a couple more weeks, they should be a lot better. Yes, I can do it all, fam. 
Uh, I'm burning 90 amps. I'm burning 90 amps and let me clean this plate out. Um, we just it One good thing if your temperature is set right and you slowing down, your slag ain't gonna be real hard to come out. And this scraper is good to go down the sides to make sure you got all that unnecessary uh, trash there. I had to put a little elbow grease on this so I kind of got it moving, but I'm gonna come in because I want y'all to see my, my root pass before I step in. All right, so hopefully y'all can see this. Hopefully y'all can see that. And I got two tie-ins in this one. And now our goal is to run a hot pass right over this one. You wanna tie in to the sides real good and wanna make sure it's clean. Hopefully y'all seen that pretty good. I'm located in Little Rock, Arkansas, family, Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm 90 amps on this machine. Uphill vertical me, now that's a different story. It all depends on the thickness of the material. Yes, I am using a Miller Matic 255. I'll show y'all the welding machine that I'm working with right now. That's what I'm working with. A Miller Matic 255. Cool machine, multi-process machine. So it's a good, a great machine for teaching because we can do everything with this one machine. This is a buck joint. I mean, this is a, uh, got a backing strip. I'm sorry. I'm going uphill. I just laid one. I'm about to get ready to lay another one. Have a little patience with me, man. I'm, ask, I'm asking questions right now. <laughs> I just laid one. I'm about to get ready to lay the other one. Like I say, you want to make sure it's clean. If you see anything in there, just wise to take it out. See anything in there, just wise to take it out. That right there turned out real, real well, so we're going to dive into it. Yes, it's 7018. 332nd. So I'm going to start this one with the rod I just used. Now, the goal with this is, like I say, we're going to put a hot pass on top of this, which is a slight weave. You're not really weaving real big at all. You actually, it's like, if you put two rods in here, it's really less than two rods that you're really weaving. And rule of thumb on the weaves, just so you know. You don't want to weave no more than three size diameter of your rod or up to five sides of the rod. So you can put five rods, five three thirty second rods together. You don't want to weave nothing wider than that. But to be safe, no more than three. Three rods together, that's about the good length of a good weave with whatever size rod you're using. Three thirty seconds, eighth inch. That's how a good way to determine how your weave should be as far as how wide you should go. All right, let's dive back into it, man. Do you a one, two, three if you got to. Keeping it tight is very important. I'll stop by my number. 
So keep in your mind that one, two, one, two, one, two, until you kind of get the concept down. Uh, I shoot for a 90 with a slight push, so probably like five to 10. No more than 10, I don't do like the 15 degree angle, but with stick welding you can be a little lenient with the angle. But I say going uphill, I shoot for a 90, and I have probably have a slight push on it. That's what I shoot for. And for those who want to know, I'm Little Rock, Arkansas. I got to re-illustrate that again. We got a 16-week welding program, 16 weeks. We teach you how to stick well and flux score well in four positions, but we test you in two, and that's vertical up and overhead. We also teach you how to MIG weld in four positions. We don't test you in the MIG welding process, uh, and we have the introduction to TIG just to see if you will like it, run a couple beads, but just the introduction to it. We don't have a full course on TIG welding at the moment. But starting the end of this year or the beginning of next year, we should have two classes. One going to be like a six to eight week class, and then we're going to have a 16 week class. So the shorter class just won't have stick welding in. A lot of the companies around here are doing a lot of manufacturing, so we're going to try to make some manufacturing classes with MIG welding, flux core welding, and doing some spool going with aluminum. So that's, that's our goal on, on how we're going to set things up. So let me dive back into this one, and then I'll come back after I finish this welding. See if I can answer y'all questions if y'all haven't gave me two minutes. Let's dive back into it, fam. So always get comfortable. I love to say that. Stay comfortable. If, 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 if testing mess you up, don't even think test. Say it's something else. Come up with a different name for it. That way it won't bother you, fam. All right, that's right. right there turned out pretty good. We're gonna let this cool down, knock the slag off of it, let y'all see it. So the goal with this one, I ran one high pass, um, I ran a root pass and a high pass. Now, for if you was in testing and you weren't comfortable with a weed, what I would do, my next passes from here on out will be stringer beads, all the way out. You don't wanna stop. Because having tie-ins from here on out can, you know, can cause you a situation, especially if something happened wrong. So I would say start at the bottom of your runout tab and just run stringers. You know, so that way you can master your travel speed to make sure you can finish and start with one welder rod. That's going to be very important. Good. Now, rule of thumb, I love putting my welding hood down when I'm knocking the slag off, and I'm going to tell you why. Slag fly. It just go. You tap it a little bit, it pops your neck. Wherever it touch on your face, lip, eye, whatever, it's going to stick and remove some skin when it's coming off. So, hey, for rule of thumb, cover your face up when you're knocking slag off so you won't peel no skin off. <laughs> Because it will happen, family. It will happen. All right, let me grab my light. Oh, uh, yeah, that turns out good. So I got a little small piece of slag right here. And it's so crazy, that light, that light helps you see little stuff like that. Now, the little piece that I just knocked out, as you see, it was way up here. So it was actually, it was in my spot where 
it won't be getting tested anyway where it'd be cutting it out. But I just took it out just for practice, you know, just to know that it's there. And I don't want it there, so I want to make sure all the, the slag and trash is gone. And you won't believe it. You can barely see it, but it's good to have this light. But right here I see the piece, and it's like a good small little piece. But I like to make sure I get it out. So you're going to have to do that too. Act like it's a real test. And if you can see it, it'll still be there. So I try to make sure everything is out. Some people say, oh, cut the amperage up, burn it out. Well, you can, but I would say just take your time, fam. So this is my high pass. Now I'm about to start running stringers, but for the sake of time, like I told you, I'm gonna do one more pass, one more weave. So that way this test won't be that long, just running stringers. So this is just for the sake of time. I'm gonna run one more uh, weave on top of that. Then I'm gonna start stringer. Now you can do that too. I have done it and passed tests. So you can weave it all. I have done the past test, but it's just easier if you just run the stringer beads. It's just, it's a whole lot easier if you run stringer beads than you try to uh, do a lot of tie-ins. And also I wanna say this too. I start off on 90 amps with this rod, 70, 18, 90 amps. Yes, I do everything, fam. Um, so what I do is I start off on 90 amps and I do not cut the machine up no more. <clears throat> and the reason for that, just play the steel hot. And this welding fixture is sucking up some of the heat too. So I don't want to keep amping up the amps, amping up the amps and, and cause a situation where it's falling out. You don't want the weld to get too hot where it's falling out. So that's why it's good to let it breathe a little bit between, you know, between these welds, make sure it's clean, make sure everything is good before you dive back into it. And I think that'll save your headache, fam. Appreciate it, man, appreciate it. Salute, salute, W. Welder. You dropping dimes now. Okay, okay, salute, salute. Uh, I'm going to do string of beads on the cap for this one, fam. I ain't going to do a solid cap uh, like, uh, like a pipe well. I'm going to do stringers because on this test, a structural test, they want you to do stringers. Oh, do you? Salute, salute. Where is it at? I run both, Miller and Lincoln. Salute, salute. No problem, no problem. You're welcome. Hey, practice makes you better, fam. Okay, okay. Uh, I just got some of my students uh, that just graduated. Uh, I believe half of them is actually working already, doing their thing. Um, one of my students from my last previous class, he actually just got a job at a place called Safe Holland in uh, Dumas, Arkansas. So it's south of Little Rock, and they're always looking for MIG welders. And they do a one-inch overhead, uh, vertical down, and flat uh, test. And they work on the chassis for 18 wheelers and big trailer trucks and stuff like that. So... The company is not going nowhere because even if we stop having gas, we're still going to be on the road. So uh, they got some good technology that they're doing. And it's easy money. To be in Arkansas, to make $20 an hour living down there, fam, to me it's a win-win. A person can actually come up and, and, and do good. So uh, right now I'm seeing people make anywhere from around 17 to 20 starting out. 17 to 20 getting out of school. Uh, depends on what they're doing. If they're going outside to do construction. Uh, one of my students started out at 25. He passed a, a D1.1 bridge test, flat, one inch, and um, he's out there getting 25. So it all depends on uh, where you at in the country and what you're doing, fam. But let me dive back into this one. I'm gonna take me a sip. Yes, it all depends on where you at in the country. If you're working for the union, but I'm in Arkansas, and this is a right to work state, and the minimum wage here right now is $11 an hour. So I just had a student go from 11 to 20. That's a game changer, family. 11 to 18, that's a game changer. So, you know, some people might say, oh, man, I made more than that when I got started. That's fine. But you might be in a different part of the country he was. When I got started, fam, my first check out of prison, 
You know how much I was making? Eight dollars an hour, fam. Eight dollars an hour. Now I didn't supersede it there, but I started off like that, and I didn't complain, fam, because you got to start somewhere. I was hungry and happy to be free. You hear me? But I got that bag, though. I did get the bag, but I started off $8 an hour. $8. I ain't even complain. I ain't gonna lie. I was happy as hell. Every day I went in and, 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 and left. <laughs> I was happy to be free. I was happy to be free. I wasn't complaining at all. But check this out. After two weeks, they gave me a raise because they seen my work ethics, fam. All right, for the sake of time, fam, we're gonna do one more weave on top of this hot pass, and then we're gonna stringer it all the way out. Burn pretty good. Always like to let it cool down. A rule of thumb. Never knock the slag off while you see the red spots because you can put pinholes and you can act you can actually uh, add some defects to your well by doing that. So don't do that, fam. I'm keeping it going, fam. Salute, salute. Thanks for checking in. Yeah, just a steady line with that string of bead. This is 3G. 3F is when it was like a fillet well, like a T joint or something like that. But this is actually a groove well. We got a groove in it and it got a backing strip on it. So this is actually 3G. So I'm gonna knock this tip of slag off and uh, I did the tip of that slag off and all the slag came off. No, that, no, it's running good. Oh yeah, it's running good right now. So we're gonna finish this. Once I finish this tie-in, I'm gonna dive back into it and um, let y'all see it and answer any questions. Yes, I'm using 330 second rod, 7018. 330 second, 7018, uphill, groove, yes. Yes, you can do 3G backing with a MIG too. I did. I have done that too. Salute, salute, man. Glad you in it, fam. Stay in it. Stay, stay in that apprenticeship. Yes, dual shield is flux also. You got flux core with gas and flux core without gas. If it's dual shield, then you're going to be using probably 75, 25, or 100% argon. And just for those who know, I've been, for those who want to know, I've been welding now over 20 years. I got to do the math. I got introduced at 17 years old. I got introduced to welding at 17 while I was in prison. And I'm 43 years old now, and my mother introduced it to me. She wanted to find a way to get me out the street, fam. So she literally came down to visitation and uh, told me about welding. Said she's seen a Tussle Welding School commercial. And they was making $100 an hour, fam. I'll never forget. That's the seed she put in my head. $100 an hour? I said, man, that's what I want to be. I want to well. <laughs> I heard about that money, fam. I was motivated, you know what I mean? But, but mom knew. Mom knew she had to do something to veer me out the streets. So that was her way to get me out the streets, was introducing me to welding. And I've been welding ever since, and I've been helping people well. And my goal is to keep the ball rolling, not only just with education, but with also welding products. I have a welding skid that uh, I have available that you can even buy the blueprints or the welding skid and some shipping container conversions. We build, we turn them into houses, cafes, bars, all that good stuff. So I got a few different ventures that I do, but everything was based on welding, fam. Based on welding. That's right.
So, rule of thumb. You want, when you're getting started, make sure you hesitate and don't go too fast at the bottom because sometimes I have seen it, even I have done it, where you get ready to do your cap or you get closer to the end, you have to put a couple more passes at the bottom to fill it out so that way it can come out. Salute, salute, thanks for checking in. I appreciate all the love and support. So make sure that you go slow and make sure that bottom feed uh, fill up too. So that way you don't have no you know, extra drumming when you're trying to do your cap. Y'all seen how that flag came off? Woo! That's why here's a good one. One thing you can notice, hopefully you can notice from watching me from the side, I am keeping a very, very tight arc. Yes, it's 7018. I'm keeping a very tight arc. I'm gonna let y'all see this and then I'll answer y'all questions. So this is my third pass, which I did a weave. And now my goal is to dive back in and start running stringers. So that's the goal. So I should have a row of stringers and then a cap. So we might have three to four beads on this cap. Make sure I check in. Salute, salute. Yeah, in structural welding, we're doing stringers all the way out. And actually, some tests tells you um, in the WP, uh, WPS, it kind of tells you that they want stringer bees and not cap. Now, if it was a pipe, I do a, a, a weave cap, but this is going to actually be a structural test, so we're just going to stringer it all the way out. I think it'll be easier to do. Uh, you know, I think it happens to the best of us as far as getting your rod stuck. It happens to the best of us. Yes, it's actually safer, family. It's better to run stringers. Now, when you're doing pipe welding, you want to run cap. You know, you can run a weave on your cap, but stringers is safer and easier for you to make sure that you pass the test. And they actually did a live test. So, uh, weld.com did a live interview and they went to a facility. I don't know what facility it was at. I don't know if it was the Lincoln facility, but they literally tested stringer beads, beads versus weaves. And the stringer beads are stronger than weeds fam stronger no hands down and you will see if you go go uh go to their youtube page and you can check out that video it was like uh stringers versus weeds i think it was well.com stringers versus weeds and they just proved to us that it's safer and stronger to run weeds i mean run stringers than it is to do weeds i'm running about 90 amps right now Uh, we don't have, uh, I'm not in Florida, fam, but I have taught some people out of Florida. Nah, 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 not necessarily say you're going to pass, uh, won't fail a test, but it just said that the, the weaves are, are a little weaker than the stringers. That was just a test that they did. So it's not saying that it's bad. Uh, if you're good at weaves, you can weave it all the way out. Uh, but for tips, in my personal opinion, I just run stringers. What kind of tips? I can give you all type of tips, family. Be specific. What kind of tips you need for a welder? When I first got out of prison, my pay was eight dollars an hour. <laughs> nah, you can't, family. Nah, you can't. You have to. When you're taking these tests, you're gonna have to have this stationary just like you just like i'm doing no i don't i keep everything the same fam in my personal opinion i rock it all the way out i said it so i can be able to do kill two birds with one stone 
I'm good now, fam. I'm, I'm, I'm real good now. You know what I mean? But like I say, I got my own products, my own business. And for those who want to get familiar with some of my products, you can go to Amazon Prime and just put in Hog, Hog, H-O-G, O-N, Hog on Welding T-shirts, and you'll start seeing some of my brands. So you can just hit Amazon Prime, check it out. Go to the top over to say brands to show you all my T-shirts. So I got clothing. I got different things going on. So it's just more than working. This here is something, family, I would literally do for free. And I mean, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy educating. And I enjoy living through other people. I know I'm not going to live here forever. I know it's meant for me to pass on. So when I leave, I'm going to make sure I teach a lot of people so I can still be here even though I'm gone. And that's my goal. That's how I plan on living to be remembered. Yes, I can TIG well. I can do it all, fam. Uh, if you go through my archives or my videos on here, you can see a couple of TIG welding videos. Also, for those who haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go on my YouTube and check it out. It's Your Welding Coach on YouTube. So go to YouTube and check that out. Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock, Arkansas, man. If you're cool with me, come down here and fool with me. My info is inside the bio. Hey, go on up. Make sure, make sure you tag me. Now, you buy a shirt, make sure you tag me. So all you got to do is put in hog on welding t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops. I got all the above, fam. So y'all get your hog on with me. Now, for those who want to know what hog on stands for, it means hustling over grounded obstacles naturally. But you know why? In life, we're going to have to go around it. We're going to have to go over it. Or we're going to have to go through it, family. But we're going to have to get our hog on. So y'all ride with me, fam. So now we're going to dive in. We're going to do some stringers. Do a string it now, but step him on this side and kind of lean up against the wall and, and, and rock this one. Sit to the side, make sure y'all can see it real good. Hopefully you can see me. And uh, the goal now is to run a string. So sometimes, remember how I was saying when you're getting started, sometimes you'll start and you can't reverse the plate. So what you do is when you start, you're going to have to slow down a little bit to fill that bottom piece up a little bit and then continue going on the way out. But you're going to have to fill it up so that way it'll be easier for your cap. Once you see this, you'll see how far I slow down. So I make, I got like a little small piece of little lump right there when I did my tie-in. But that's gonna be easy to fix though. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. So that turned out good. Now I'm gonna dive back into it.
everything out of that one. But I'm out of my test. I made it out of my test spot. But I had to slow down to make sure I tie it in good. Now, I'm actually ready for um, my cap. So I'm gonna clean this off and then let y'all see it. Let me go down, I see a lot of messages I missed. I'm all right, fam. Now, we make way more than police officers, that's for sure, salute, salute. <laughs> They do have respirators in the hood, but I'm okay, though. It wasn't going up under my hood. I've been doing it for a while. I know how to avoid the smoke. Uh, you having troubles with the cap. Okay. What kind, of pro what kind of problems are you having troubles with the cap? Now, I'm going to tell you a lot of times... We tend to want to go too slow or put too much strain on the cap. And I mean by that, like you get on here and you really just want to do surface wells, especially once it's sealed all the way up. Once you got it filled all the way up, you just want to do surface. You don't want to spend a whole lot of time. And you most definitely, you most definitely don't want to have a tie-in on your cap. Yeah, you most definitely don't want no tie-in on your cap, fam. So I pretty much got it summed up now to start start capping it. So, so let y'all see this. I got one spot. I got a look, a little small hump where I tied in on that last one, but it turned out real, real good. I got a small hump right here, but that's going to be easy to fix. And I'm going to show you how I do it. Cause on this one, we ain't got, we can't use no grinding wheels or nothing like this. So even though on this test, this is a D1.1 test, you can use a grinder on this test, but we ain't going to use nothing. We're just going to weld it all the way out. So we'll be okay. So we're gonna dive back into it and just keep going. And, and, and honestly, learning how to weld it like this here without using the grinder just gonna increase your skills. It's gonna make you a lot better and um, tying in and learning how to do certain things that just help you out a whole lot. Could you see it? You couldn't see it? Let me go back through that. You couldn't see that? You couldn't see that, fam. And like I say, now we're about to start capping it. Hopefully you can see that. Yes, fam. I, I really enjoy helping people, fam. As long as a person come in and authentic and needs some guidance, my goal is to help them. No, a fabricator is different than a board maker. Uh, I don't wait a whole lot of time. Like, I'm really waiting more time than I normally do. It's keep, keep a tight arc, family. Tight arc, watch your travel speed and your angle. I'm an instructor, fam. I'm an instructor. I'm an instructor, a CEO, and a business owner, family. So I teach, and I help people actually do the same thing that I do, start their businesses. So now we're going to dive into this cap, fam, for the sake of time. 
It's almost time for me to get up out of here for the day. I wanted to come live though and go live and go over this test and just answer a couple questions. And then I'm gonna also turn this into a series. So for those who didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing, I'm gonna turn this one and a couple more videos I'm actually working on into a series. And I did upload my first series. So for those who are interested in checking out, check out my first series on there. I got like four videos. Uh, at least I think it's over a hundred minutes of content. So you should get something out of it, fam, for real. So, the goal is, when you cap it, don't have no tie-ins. That's the main thing. Look at that. Flag already falling off this one. Already falling off. I ain't have to hit it. I can straight it up. Now, when you're doing your cap, you don't want it to exceed past the lip an uh, eighth inch. That's normally what I say. A sixteenth to an eighth inch, and you don't want it to be over normally about an eighth inch over the plate. I have before. I have I have threw the rod a couple times. <laughs> it happens. I think it happens to all of us, fam. Nah, fam, I ain't worried about my chin catching on fire. It is what it is. If it do, then it was meant to be. I can't stop something that was meant to be. I just try to prevent it. You know what I mean? Hey, now I can say this, man. If you say something on here that I feel is inappropriate, I'm not even going to address it. I'm just going to block you and keep it moving, fam. <laughs> That's what I do. I don't, I don't swap spit. I did too much time, so, you know, I'm a little rough around the edges, fam. You got to remember, I did 11 years in prison, so I'm a humble person, but I don't do no swapping, no spit. <laughs> I don't do none of that. I'm actually trying to get over here some. Probably move. I like linking up against it, but I want y'all to see me pretty good, so I might try to link up this here about right here. But you can see me. I like to lean against that wall, though. That was pretty cool, but I want y'all to be able to see me from the side.
So normally, like I say, I like to let the rest, always let the plate rest just a little bit, fam. Just a little bit. I would never just go back and back into it because it can get too high to spill out on you. Don't want that at all. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank, thanks for checking in. I'm glad you enjoyed the channel. I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm right-handed, fam. I'm right-handed, but I can well with both of my hands. It's not real hard, family, but it do take practice. It's not hard, but it does take practice. Keep a tight gap. Yeah, you got to keep that gap tight. Now, I have never did aluminum piping. I have only did stainless and carbon. My personal, you know, I, have, I haven't did aluminum piping, but I have done a lot of aluminum welding, but not aluminum piping. You wanna actually, you wanna go so close to the, to the uh, metal where it's kissing the plate. That's what I like to say. You wanna get it where it's kissing it, and the force of the rod will kinda push you away from it. As y'all see, that came out pretty good, and that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a real good sign. Let's dive into this next. One. I might do three cap. This is what I'm trying to see. I might, yeah, I might have a three bead cap. I'm, I'm thinking about sliding one more, but I might be all right. Let's see how it goes. And we're done, fam. So the main thing with this test is keep you a good light on you. Get you a scraper or something. You can clean the sides of it to make sure the sides of it is clean. Your wire brush and your chip and hammer. Now, if you're taking this test and you are able to use the grinder, Use the grinder, because you might have a little BB or something just to make it perfect. If you can use it, ain't nothing wrong with using it to make it perfect. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, if you can't, then take your time. You know, don't be in no rush, so that way everything can turn out good. And I'm going to use the grinder to knock off the wire wheel to clean it up to kind of have to buff it a little bit. I might have to go, yeah. I might have to get another pad, too, because that one's too small. And with how this is narrow shape, it always stops it. So I need to get another wheel on it. But y'all see how I'm scraping this off and it's just falling down. So you know that it tied in good. And this is a 3G. 3 8 plate, well test, 
with a backing strip. This is a 3G well test with a backing strip. Like I said, I was going to take it over here and I'm probably still going to buff it some, but I still want y'all to see it. With a backing strip and that's 3B cap. And you always want to come all the way out. You see, I came all the way. I always want to come all the way out. And remember that that inch at the bottom from here to here is going to get cut out. From there to there is going to get cut out. And that inch here and that inch right up in here is what they're going to be testing. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that way, if you do have any errors, you won't have errors in that spot where you're testing it. Because a lot of people have errors in that one spot where they're testing it. So... I just want to give y'all some updates on this. Test is real easy, fam. Real easy test. But I would say get fine-tuned with the string of beads. So if you're working on your test, I would say uh, a, a good way to practice this test, in my personal opinion, is get a two-inch piece of angle or a three-inch piece of angle, inch and a half piece of angle, put it in the center and start running string of beads in the center and then tie it in on the sides and just walking them like that. And as you're doing that, it's gonna actually prepare you to do a groove. So if you do that, I think that'll help you out on your uh, well test. Uh, let me ask a couple questions before I get up out of here, fam. It can come, um, porosity can come from a few different things. It can come from not being close enough, having too much of an uh, arc length. Uh, it can come from um, a defective rod too. You know what I mean? So, but most definitely if you go too fast, I ain't going to say you'll get porosity, but you most definitely won't get a consistent bead. Yes, keep in mind the gravity and heat when you're doing this uh, 3G well. So just keep that in mind. Yes, well, it's easy to get into. You just got to find a facility near you. I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas, family. I appreciate everybody for checking in. A lot of comments been going through. Uh, I appreciate everybody for logging in with me, man, checking in with me. Y'all make sure y'all go check out my YouTube page. It's Your Welding Coach on YouTube. Uh, it's Your Welding Coach on Facebook. It's Your Welding Coach on TikTok. And it's uh, Hog On Welding, Hog On University on YouTube. Uh, also, uh, that's my first channel that I started once I re uh, was released from prison. And I started building my business. Now, uh, I, I wasn't into it when I first got out, fam. So I'm going to say since 2016, I've been blogging. Since 2016, and that's when I started my business. So I transitioned from working for someone and I started doing my own thing. But this is what I did. I did 10 years in prison. And when I got out, I worked for someone else for 10 years so I can learn the game and the business. And then I branched off and started doing my own thing, fam. I put 10 years in, uh, in prison and on the job working for others. And then I started creating my own wealth. And uh, that's my goal with this channel is to teach y'all how to weld and also how to create your own wealth by building products. And that's going to be a whole other video. We actually going to do a series on it. It's going to it's going to be called products over talent. But I got one series up now. So for those who like uh, tuning in with me and checking me out, check out that series I just put up, fam. I really appreciate it. Y'all be blessed. Continue to get your hog on. I'm about to stay. Y'all be blessed. Hog on.